Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Let me tell you about Darius the Great, the king who ruled over the Persian Empire at its peak. This guy left a legacy of pure awesomeness, not only was he a master at military domination, but he was also known for spreading goodwill. Now, if you're into deciphering ancient scripts, you've probably heard of the Behistun inscription. This bad boy is a multilingual engraving, carved into a mountain in western Iran. And get this, it was super crucial to figuring out cuneiform script. Plus, it shows Darius as a towering giant standing over his tiny captives. Speaking of giants, Darius himself was said to be a giant too. With his lineage tracing back to the semi-divine rulers of Persia's glittering past, it's no wonder he was such a larger-than-life figure. In fact, when Alexander the Great took over Persepolis in 330 BCE and sat on Darius's throne, his feet couldn't even reach the ground. That's how massive it was. Nowadays, you can check out Darius's tomb as a popular tourist attraction in Persepolis. But get this, nobody really knows for sure if the giant king's skeleton is actually buried there. It's a mystery just waiting to be uncovered, and if there really is a giant skeleton inside that tomb, well, it might just be worth the risk of desecrating it to find out. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. In the city of Kalar, over in Iraq, some archaeologists made a jaw-dropping discovery up in the hills of Rahim and Rizgari city. They found some graves, and get this, the bones they uncovered, belonged to men that were over 10 feet tall. Now, Muhammad Ali, who's the official mouthpiece for the Department of Archaeology, said that these skeletons are so big that they're abnormal. They could even date back thousands of years BC, making them some of the oldest remains ever found. The team's still cleaning up the graves, but so far, they found four of them, and they're all about 10 feet tall. How's that for fascinating? Speaking of giants, y'all ever heard of Gilgamesh? He was the OG hero of the ancient world, ruling and building up the city of Uruk almost 5,000 years ago. And let me tell you, the tales of his exploits are pretty epic. Literally. Because the poem that describes his adventures, the Epic of Gilgamesh, is the oldest known piece of epic poetry ever written. Here is something even crazier, there's a flood myth in that poem, that's almost identical to the one found in the Bible thousands of years later. And get this folks, for the longest time, nobody thought they'd ever find Gilgamesh's tomb. He was just too much of a mythical figure, like Hercules or something. But then in 2003, a group of German archaeologists made a shocking announcement. They'd actually found his lost tomb near the dried up Euphrates River in northern Iraq. Unfortunately, the Iraq war broke out shortly after, and we haven't heard any updates about the discoveries since. But man, can you imagine what kind of wild things they might have found in that tomb, if they had the chance to really dig in and explore it. This from the original BBC article in 2003. The Epic of Gilgamesh, written by a Middle Eastern scholar 2,500 years before the birth of Christ, commemorated the life of the ruler of the city of Uruk, from which Iraq gets its name. Now, a German-led expedition has discovered what is thought to be the entire city of Uruk, including where the Euphrates once flowed, the last resting place of its famous king. 
I don't want to say definitely it was the grave of King Gilgamesh, but it looks very similar to that described in the epic, Jorg Fassbinder, of the Bavarian Department of Historical Monuments in Munich, told the BBC World Service's Science in Action program. In the book, actually a set of inscribed clay tablets, Gilgamesh was described as having been buried under the Euphrates, in a tomb apparently constructed when the waters of the ancient river parted following his death. We found just outside the city an area in the middle of the former Euphrates River. The remains of such a building which could be interpreted as a burial, Mr. Fassbinder said. He said, the amazing discovery of the ancient city under the Iraqi desert had been made possible by modern technology. By differences in magnetization in the soil, you can look into the ground, Mr. Fassbinder added. The difference between mudbricks and sediments in the Euphrates River gives a very detailed structure. This creates a magnetogram, which is then digitally mapped, effectively giving a town plan of Europe. The most surprising thing was that we found structures already described by Gilgamesh, Mr. Fassbinder stated. We covered more than 100 hectares. We have found garden structures and field structures as described in the epic, and we found Babylonian houses. But he said the most astonishing find was an incredibly sophisticated system of canals. Very clearly, we can see in the canal some structures showing that flooding destroyed some houses, which means it was a highly developed system. It was like Venice in the desert. Whoa, hold up folks. This just keeps getting crazier and crazier. So apparently, not only was Gilgamesh the first hero of the ancient world, but according to the Book of Giants, which was recovered from the Dead Sea Scrolls, he was also one of the mighty Nephilim giants who ruled before the Great Flood. And get this y'all, he was said to have been half god, and between 16 to 18 feet tall. Can you even imagine that? I mean, that would turn the established timeline of history upside down and cause earthquakes throughout the halls of the academic world. No wonder they weren't in a hurry to dig him up. But man, if they ever do find his body and confirm that he really was that big, it would be a total game changer. We'd have to rethink everything we thought we knew about ancient history and mythology. And you know what? I'm kinda hoping they do find him, because I'm just dying to see what else they might uncover. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.